Hello everyone. So today we're going to take a look at the skull of a black vulture. Now the scientific name for a black vulture is Corygips atratus. That comes from corax for crow, gips for vulture, and then atratus means clothed in black. And you can definitely see the uh, inspiration for that scientific name just by looking at them. So vultures are in the family Cathartidae, which means purifier, and that's because vultures are famous for eating decomposing animals. Um, they have beaks that look very similar to hawks and other raptors, but they don't use this hook to catch live prey as so much as they use it to rip into decaying meat. So, this beak is also very interesting because you can see this really large hole here. Now this is called a nair, and you can think of it as the bird's nostril. They don't have an outer fleshy part like humans and other mammals do, but the nares for vultures are very interesting because they're so large due to the fact that vultures are one of the very, very few bird species that actually has a sense of smell. Birds don't normally use a sense of smell to find their food. Uh, hawks, they'll use their eyesight. Eagles will use their eyesight. But if your prey isn't moving, if it's already dead and it's decaying, well, it makes a lot more sense to be able to smell them from very far away. Now, the other really interesting part of the vulture skull are these two bones here. These are actually the upper mandible. These special upper mandible bones actually have a specific name. They're called the maxilla. And here we have the lower mandible. Now, at Duke Farms, all of our specimens come from natural deaths, um, animals that we find on the property. So unfortunately, they can't be perfect all the time. This skull is missing a part on each side here called the quadrate, and that is part of the upper mandible, and it connects the lower mandible to the upper mandible. But as you can see, the upper mandible here is super, super flexible. That means that the black vulture has an incredible ability to have a very, very wide gape. A gape is how far an animal can open its mouth. Very, very flexible. Another anatomical feature that makes vultures really adept at eating their specific type of food is right here. This is called the frontonasal hinge. And if I hold this very still and move the beak, this bone's not broken. The frontal bone here and the nasal bone are separated so that the vulture can reach deep inside of a carcass and open its beak up like this and move the lower mandible at the same time. What's interesting about black vultures compared to their cousins, the turkey vulture or the condors that are in the same family is that they actually have the weakest grip strength. They have this really, really bent, this really, really arched lower mandible. This allows them to have the widest gape of any of the vultures, but the weakest grip strength. Now this is interesting because yes, I did say that vultures normally don't eat living animals, but black vultures are a little bit different. They will actually team up and kill small animals. A group of black vultures has been known to attack farm animals, possums, maybe even raccoons, and because they have that really wide gape, it actually allows them to hold a struggling small animal much more than like a turkey vulture or any of its cousins would.